In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to work with JSON in your AI agents. We're going to learn what JSON is, how it works, and how we can use it inside of an agent. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you already know what JSON is and how it works, feel free to skip ahead in the video. If you've never heard of JSON before, let's talk about it really quick. So what is JSON? Well, JSON is just a universal language for structured data. It helps us organize data in uh, various ways and then use it later on in our workflows or in applications. It looks a little something like this. So you can see that it has these uh, curly braces and we're going to talk about all of this. But if you just look at this and read through it, you'll be able to tell a lot about the type of data that this is. This is a user and this user has an ID associated with their uh, user account. Their name is Alice and they have a couple of different roles and you can see based off of their profile that they are 30 years of age and they are active on whatever platform or service that they're using according to this example. And we can think of this data as being stored as pairs. These are called key value pairs. So if we're looking at the name, the name is the key and the value of that name is Alice. So values can be all sorts of different data types, and it's important that you get used to working with these kinds of data types. They can be a string, like we saw Alice. This is a, a piece of text. They can be a number, and a number can be a whole number or a number with a decimal point like we see here. They can be a Boolean value, which simply represents true or false. They can be an array, which can be thought of as a list, and the list can include strings and numbers and all of these different data types, and, or it can be an object. And uh, an object has several of these key value pairs inside of them. It's essentially a list of key value pairs. So. JSON also supports nesting. So if we look at this example, you can see that this is a, a, an object and inside of this object, there is a key user and an object within that. And within that object, there is another nested value profile that contains another nested object. So you can think of this kind of like being files on your computer and how files can have folders and folders can contain folders or other files. So a couple of rules when writing JSON. All keys must be strings, meaning it needs to be in quotes and have text uh, within those quotes. You separate key value pairs using commas. So when you have one key value pair, if you're going to add another one, you need to have a comma to separate those two key value pairs. And then three, there should be no trailing commas, meaning you should not have a comma at the end of your key value pairs. Lists. You can see on the left hand side, this is doing everything wrong. You can see the keys, the name key should be in quotes. It does not have a comma separating these two, and it also includes a trailing comma. On the right hand side is the correct way to do it, where each key is a string in these quotes, and then we are separating them with key value pairs. So, how do we use JSON in AI agents? Well, a lot of the blocks that you can use in Mind Studio will actually return JSON. So for example, we have this search Google News block, just as an example, and it can return that data back in JSON. So this shows you all of the articles uh, that come back via that query. And it, it'll look something like this. This is the sample JSON that's included in the quick help section. You can also use AI to generate JSON and create structure. And we're going to be talking about that in a second. So you can prompt your AI uh, to extract or sort through or categorize information. And you can get that information back as JSON by giving that generate text block a sample JSON output. Lastly, when you use JSON, you can call on individual values from that JSON. So even though if we go back to this example called articles, uh, we can pull an individual part of that data 
by utilizing some special syntax in order to get that piece of information. So what that what does that mean for variables? It means you don't have to utilize the entirety of that variable inside of your prompts. You can simply pull and extract a single piece of data by using this special syntax. You can see here we've got this uh, get articles and then the the path name here. I don't want you to get confused here. This is all conceptual, but what you should know is that this is going to return the single URL from this entire piece of JSON. And that's important later down the line when I start showing you some examples. The last thing that's important to note is that you can actually iterate through JSON. So if we think about JSON as being this list of key value pairs, you'll notice that we actually, in this JSON here, have this thing called sources. And this sources has an array of different objects. So you can see that this list is a list of lists. And in each of these, there is a URL. So if we wanted to go through each of those items and just extract the URL, it would look something like this. We would use this special syntax called each article sources, and then we would pull the URL, and that would go through each individual source and look at the data of just that individual source, and then extract only the URL from those sources. So again, uh, don't get confused. All you need to know is that you can go through individual items on this list uh, very easily when you have this sort of structured data in your AI agents. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look inside of a project, and hopefully this will make a little more sense. So here I am inside of my AI uh, agent workflow, and you can see I have a couple of different workflows because I'm going to show you how we can use JSON in all sorts of different ways. So in this first workflow, this is the most basic. We're going to read JSON, and you can see here that I have this search Google News block, and I have it looking for AI agents, and it's going to return this in the format of JSON. So right now we have this output variable that I'm calling Google. Google News. Let's go ahead and just for uh, the sake of playing around, we're going to display just that JSON. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the draft agent. And you can see here that I get this array of different items. And each item is an object that contains the position in the list, the title of the article, and a link to the article, and the thumbnail to the article. So Let's go back and take a look at some of the concepts and modify this a little bit. Let's say that we just wanted to pull the very first title from the very first article that's presented to us. Well, we can utilize this special syntax that we saw earlier, where we can say get articles and then include the path. So here's how it works. Instead of using Google News, I'm going to say something like, here is the first article title. And then in the double curly braces, I'm going to use this syntax. It's called get. And you can see if I type in get, you can see here we can find uh, the property from a variable. And in this case, that variable is a JSON variable. We have this variable Google News, so all we need to do is replace my variable with Google News, and then we're gonna need to find the path to that variable. So what does that path look like? Well, if we look at this JSON, that path is going to go and find the first item in the array, and then within that, we are going to find the title. And so let's go ahead and do that. So to start at the root, we'll start with this dollar sign and a period. And then we're going to have the first item in the array. And arrays start at zero. So we can use position zero. And then we can find the title because it's labeled with the key title. And so now let's go ahead and run this again. I'm going to open the draft agent. You can see that we get the title of the article here. So there you go. You can see we have the first title from that article now appearing in our workflow. So we're able to get that individual value simply 
uh, by utilizing uh, the syntax within the JSON. So let's assume that instead of getting the first article, we actually wanted to get all of the article titles. And why don't we also get all of the article links? And maybe we want to present it so that we can show those thumbnails. Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to iterate through this list. This is a list of, let's see, 97 different links. Now, how do we do something like that? Well, we can use this uh, other special JSON that is called uh, each, hashtag each. And so what we're going to be doing is going through each item inside of our variable, Google News. So we've put each Google News. What that's indicating is that we're going to go through each individual item in this list, starting from zero all the way to 97. And then we might want to pull the, the title. And maybe we want to pull the link. And then because this is markdown, I'm also going to include a uh, line break here just so that it looks uh, a little nicer. Now, when you use each, let's go ahead and indent this so that it just looks a little nicer here. When you use hashtag each, this is kind of like opening and closing tags. So we want to make sure that we close out the each with the slash each. So what this is doing is it's saying for each item in the Google News JSON, give me the title and give me the link. And we can even use the markdown um, uh, formatting to, let's say, make this a an H2 title, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like when I open up the draft agent. So now you can see here that I'm getting each individual title and each individual uh, link from here. This also comes with a thumbnail. So why don't we go ahead and utilize that markdown and uh, include uh, a thumbnail at the beginning of each of these. So remember that when we want an image, we can use this exclamation point, brackets, and then the variable uh, containing the image. So I'm going to type in thumbnail because that is the key for this image. You can see the image here. That's the key thumbnail. And so now what we're doing is we're, in, we're getting the thumbnail, we're getting the title, and we are getting a, uh, a link here. Let's go ahead and run this one more time and see what that looks like. Great, so now you can see here that we have the article with the image and the title. Why don't we actually uh, just change the order of this so that we can make it look a little nicer. And maybe we'll include uh, a divider line here. And let's run this one last time and then we'll move on. Great, so now you can see here that we have the title, the thumbnail, and the link to each individual article. And we can spend all this time formatting this later, but the point is that what we're doing here is that we are iterating through this entire list and presenting and pulling only the values that we'd like to pull from this JSON data. So now that you know how we can pull values from JSON, I'm going to show you a few examples of how we can create JSON. So one of the ways that we create JSON in order to create structure is we use JSON to create all kinds of lists. So for example, let's say I get this uh, Google search and what happens when we get a Google search is we get this uh, output here. We get this output that gives us a title, description, and a URL. Let's say we wanted to simplify that and I only wanted a list of the URLs. Well, I can actually use a generate text block in, and I'm going to feed in those search results and I'm just going to say extract all of the links and in our output schema you can see that I'm using this JSON output schema I'm giving it just an array of links a list of links so now let's go ahead and we'll set this as the entry flow and we will 
open the draft agent and run this, it's going to ask us what we're looking for. So I'm just going to say best dog breeds and see what it returns. And what we should get back rather than getting that full JSON is a list of links, because then we might want to take those links and scan each individual link one by one. So you can see here, it is only pulling the links. If we look in the debugger here for this run, what, what we get in return is this list of links here. And if we go back, you can see here that we do get this JSON returned, but it's just the list of links. So it's a good way to pare down uh, the, uh, some uh, JSON that you already have. So let's take a look at our last example, and this is where it's gonna hopefully all click together. Once you start understanding these concepts, you're gonna be able to utilize one of our most useful blocks, the generate asset block. And we're gonna have a full video on this, so don't worry about um, learning this right now, but one thing that you can do is you, in, when you generate text or use the generate asset block, you can actually create an HTML template. And so you can see here that the template itself is HTML and we are using the same uh, syntax that we used before in various places within the HTML. So in this case, we are looking at each section. We're gonna include the heading of each section. If it has body content, we're gonna include the text from the body copy. If it has uh, you know, key takeaways and items, we're gonna include each item from the list. Uh, same thing with entities here at the bottom. If it has a list of entities, we're going to pull the data about each of those entities and display it as a list. And so you can create these really cool pages. And so the, the way this workflow works is that we are pulling content from uh, an article along or a piece of content online, and we are extracting all that information and then creating this page. So let's go ahead and publish this, and we'll be able to see uh, some information uh, about the uh, page that we're looking at. So you can see I'm providing um, some page content here. And if we go to something like uh, theverge.com and uh, look at, you know, this live thread, uh, we can utilize our AI agent and it can generate these HTML outputs. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, I'm going to go down. This is the exact workflow from this executive summary uh, agent. And when we run this, it will generate this HTML page for us. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to when this finishes rendering and uh, we'll take a look at what we're able to do utilizing that uh, JSON uh, content that's extracted from this page in order to create um, the summary page uh, via AI. Okay, it finished rendering. So you could see here that we get kind of this nice uh, post page. And this page has a, a, a thumbnail image that's being pulled from the metadata, and it's extracting all of this information, including all of these key highlights, the latest game announcements, the event schedule, there are a bunch of entities involved that it's extracting. So we're getting all this JSON and uh, utilizing it inside of an HTML page. And we're gonna be having a whole video covering this, but if you're curious, you can go on to Mind Studio. You can look up any agent on the uh, agent's page, make a copy of it, and check out how it's built. So if, for example, you wanna see how we're utilizing this uh, extracted JSON in executive summary or in YouTube to executive summary or in deep research. There are a bunch of agents that are utilizing this technique to create much more sophisticated outputs. So that is it for this video. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I know it was a bit of a long one. Um, if you like this video, please drop us a like. If you have additional questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below. Don't forget to check out our documentation for more information about utilizing JSON in your workflows. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, for more updates to Mind Studio. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.